Hi, I'm Nicholas Schneider, here to provide an update on LNG shipping markets. It's been a while since our last update, so I thought I would review what's happened in 2013 and provide you an outlook on 2014 and the future. After record high rates in 2012, uh, short-term and spot LNG charter rates fell gradually through 2013. Uh, the problem for vessel owners was that the fleet expanded, but there wasn't much new cargo. In fact, the amount of LNG traded in 2013 was basically the same as in 2012. And there was two reasons for this. Firstly, only a small amount of new liquefaction export capacity came online in 2013. Uh, one new train started in Algeria, but not until the end of the year. And the only other train, only other facility to come online was in Angola, which started in 2013, uh, but then ceased production due to technical outages. And at this point, uh, it looks like it won't be back until 2015. The second issue is that production was down in existing facilities. Uh, technical problems in Norway and in Nigeria limited cargoes, and a lack of feed gas supply kept production in Egypt to about one-third of its total capacity. In summary, there was moderate fleet growth in 2013, but basically uh, no new cargo supply. And this trend of vessel supply increasing faster than uh, cargo supply looks likely to continue in 2014. About 30 new vessels are scheduled to deliver this year, which is more than has been delivered in the last three years combined. And about half of these vessels are, have been ordered speculatively, which means uh, they aren't on long-term contract with any customer and will be looking for cargoes in the spot and short-term market. As a result, short-term charter rates for LNG vessels are down to about $60,000 a day, which is down from $150,000 a day seen during the peak in 2012. As for new LNG supply this year, there's not a lot of new projects coming online. Only three projects are scheduled to start production this year. Those are uh, the Papua New Guinea project, the Queensland Curtis project in Australia, and an expansion to the RZU facility in, Alger in Algeria. The Papua New Guinea project has already shipped its first cargo, but once they ramp up to full production, they'll be selling cargoes on long-term contract and therefore won't be adding much cargo to the short-term market. In addition, Queensland Curtis won't be starting up until later this year, although they are on schedule for production. Therefore, we have another year of expanding fleet supply and not a, little, not a lot of new cargo supply. Therefore, we expect short-term charter rates will remain under pressure in 2014, but we remain optimistic about long-term prospects for LNG shipping. In the last few years, the fleet has been expanding faster than cargo supply, but that trend is going to reverse in the next few years. Starting in 2015, six new export projects are coming online. This includes three large projects in Australia, two new floating LNG production vessels, and one small export project in Indonesia. Once these projects come online, they'll add about 30 million tons per year of new export capacity, which is more capacity than was added in 20, 2011, 2012, and 2013 combined. And this expansion of capacity is going to continue after 2015 as well, as projects continue to ramp up in Australia and the first export projects come online in the United States. But there's still a large order book to deliver. About 75 vessels are scheduled to deliver between the start of 2015 and the end of 2017. And therefore, we believe that the market will be fully supplied with vessels this year and next before starting to rebalance in 2016 and 2017 as enough new export supply comes online. Overall, this is good for TK. Our current fleet of LNG vessels is fully fixed through 2015. When it comes to our new builds, our first two vessels are fixed long term to Chenny Air starting in 2016. And the next deliveries, three vessels in 2017, will arrive into what we believe is a firming market. Therefore, we remain confident that these vessels will be fixed at attractive long term rates. In summary, in the next two years, we see a significant amount of fleet growth without as much growth in new export supply. And this is going to put pressure on short term rates and be challenging for owners with speculative new builds. Long term though, we see a lot of new LNG supply coming from such regions as Australia, the United States, and possibly even Canada and Russia. And we think that this makes for long term strong demand in LNG shipping. That's all for now, and uh, I look forward to talking to you next quarter with another update.